What's up, Wolverines? I'm Aiden de Oliveira. And I'm Matthew Gudinski. And welcome to another edition of WBLN. Get ready for an amazing weekend as Tombola season is here. David Garrido has more. Tombola is Belen's biggest fundraising event every year. We sat down with Father Willie Garcia Tunion and asked him the process to preparing for Tombola every year. So there's a lot of moving parts to getting ready for Tombola. The bulk of the work is carried by Ms. Gigi Garcia Chan, who organizes everything from beginning to end, but she has a lot of people that are helping her. So maintenance is a lot of work, faculty and staff does a lot of work in preparation, and then the parents are get very, very involved in that process. And then in particular, class of 2024, the senior class also carries a lot of the load as well. So Tomba is by far the, the, the largest, most successful uh, fundraising event that we have during the year. Uh, last year we raised over a million dollars. All of it went to financial assistance. But I tell you that the greatest thing about Tombola is not how much money it raises, it's just how many people it brings together. That's why Tombola is so incredibly important. So what are our expectations of Tombola? Actually, every year we expect Tombola to get bigger and to get better and to ultimately raise more money. Uh, I think we're gonna be on track for that because we had the culinary extravaganza, which is the kickoff dinner for Tombola uh, last Saturday. And we had over 1,500 people that showed up, which is the largest we have ever had an event like that. So that is normally a pretty good indicator of the number of people who are going to be here. The weather looks good, people are excited, and uh, it's gonna be probably the best Tombola in reference to numbers and money that we've raised. We look forward to seeing everybody here this weekend at Tombola. For WBLN, I'm David Garrido. Chemistry teacher Mrs. Vilberg is the organizer of an expedition studying the quality of our water here in Florida. Daniel Diaz has more. Hugh Willoughby was a scientist who toured the Everglades in the 1800s and had some miraculous discoveries. It was just nearly a year ago where members of the Belen Climate Awareness Club joined some researchers who were recreating this journey. Belen recently held a symposium to display the journey and their discoveries. The symposium was held because um, Halloween, November 1, November 2 of 2022, um, I took a few boys in the last part of the Willoughby expedition. Uh, the boys sampled as if they were doing PhD research with the University of Florida and we had to know what the data was all about and how it could impact the future as bad as it's impacting us now. So it's just a pretty much an awareness, a take the blindfold off kind of moment that our waters are not as clean or as awesome as we think they are. Not just students, but anyone should study Willoughby, what he did back then, the expedition of 2022. His um, testing from back in the late 1800s is the baseline for all of the water chemistry throughout the state of Florida. Uh, with the expedition uh, about a year and a half ago, just you know, the reenactment and the new testing just proves what's in our water and that we should know it all. We should be aware. Um, the situation is not very awesome and we need to get that fixed, whether it just be from word to word, mouth to mouth. Back then in the late 1800s, Willoughby found, you know, some really good data. Waters were not as contaminated as they are now. Wildlife, it was everything that the Everglades should hold, all the fauna, the flora, and in abundance. Now the data is really, really bad. and. When I took the boys, we didn't see that much. Senior Nicholas Sainfor, a participant in the Climate Awareness Club, brings us more. The Willoughby Symposium, hosted by Dr. Tracy Baker, uh, shed light on what we've done to our natural environment in the Everglades, such as a study that carried out statistics for pH levels, runoff, plastics in the water, debris. Um, certain pathogens as well as certain compounds in the water um, and taking note on wildlife endangered species as well as invasive species. Willoughby originally conducted the expedition in the late 1800s, early 1900s using only canoes and tents and we replicated that um, expedition as well as the route he originally took that led us into the Bay of Biscayne and some of the findings were pretty drastic there were still pollutants everywhere. For WBLN, I'm Daniel Diaz. A dramatic scene out of Florida Thursday night where a small plane crashed at the Bayside Waters Mobile Home Park in Clearwater. The crash had several homes on fire. The Federal Aviation Administration says the plane crashed after the pilot reported the engine failure. 
First responders from Clearwater Fire Department and other agencies were on the scene. The fire chief Thursday night said there were several fatalities, both from the plane and a mobile home, that FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board are investigating. The nation's most famous rodent has good news for those who are sick of winter. Puxutani Phil emerged from his burrow in Puxutani, Pennsylvania Friday morning and did not see a shadow. That means we will have an early spring. But what this weather did not provide is a shadow or reason to hide. Glad tidings on this Groundhog Day. An early spring is on the way. Phil and his friends have been predicting the seasons since 18 through 87. According to, the, to data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, his accuracy rate since 2013 is just under 40%. However, the National Weather Service's Climate Prediction Center is calling for above average temperatures across a huge part of the U.S. this month. So Phil may end up being right this year. What's up, Wolverines? I'm David Garrido, and I'm here with your sports. Formula One star Alexander Hamilton has made a shocking decision to leave Mercedes-Benz and join Ferrari for his 2024 Formula One campaign. Last night, the Venezuelan baseball team faced off versus Dominican Republic at Lone Depot Park here in Miami in the 2024 Caribbean Series. Venezuela defeated the DR 3-1. Venezuela opened the scoring in the top of the third on a single to right field by Amarista. They then plated another run in the top of the six on a Flores single to center field. The DR responded in the bottom of the six by plating their one and only run when Cano hit a sacrifice fly to center field. And in the top of the eighth, Puig sealed the game for Venezuela with a 460-foot bomb to left field. That's all for your sports, and now back to the guys at the desk. Thank you, David. That's all your news for today, Wolverines. Make sure to follow us on all social medias. Stay golden, Wolverines.